Um, what I'm here to do is to ask some questions of Sophia for you about the Matrix. You've just been given a tremendous amount of information. And just to tell you a little story, to back you up a little bit, back in 1999, many of you in this room woke up, went to the movies that day, you saw The Matrix, first one. When you came home that evening, you had more consciousness than you did when you woke up. What would you do with the information that you were just given if you could expand on that consciousness and have more of a vision, more intuitiveness, more insight, more power to see what you can do in the future. I want to introduce the most tenacious, courageous, conscientious, um, gregarious person that I know. And uh, she can see, believe it or not, far into the future. Uh, you saw a person of that with the Matrix. You were all duped into thinking that it was owned by Warner Brothers and the Wiskowskis. That was all a bunch of crap. She owns it, she wrote it, she created it. And you can look it up on the uh, internet and see who owns all the trademarks, all of the copyrights, it is this one. Wow. Three years ago, we were in court in uh, Utah, and two federal judges verified that she owns everything. So, without any further chit-chat from me, let me introduce you to Sophia Stewart. <laughs> like Morpheus, welcome to the real world, because you've been in an illusion for a long time, and you know, that's how it is in our world. It's very illusionary, a lot of programs, it's what you believe, if you're seeking the truth or you're seeking a lie. But anyway, I want to tell you about the Matrix, as you can see, that is the Matrix 4 poster, Matrix 4 movie coming soon, and I'm talking about with Leo, Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, that is the real Matrix. Not, not a Marvel story, talking about the Matrix, but the real Matrix. And I also want to tell people, the, look, this new technology that's coming, the vir we're not going to have a lot of time. There's going to be virtual penal systems. A virtual penal system in the future is when Homeland Security and the law enforcement <laughs> Before we go there, I think maybe they want to know what is the economy going to look like in the future? Okay, let me tell you what the economy is going to look like after the matrix. What's going to happen is we're not, like I said before, we're not going to have all this time anymore. So, like the system that we have now, is being bogged down with a lot of money, a lot of problems. So, like the jails and the prison system that you guys are familiar with, is too time consuming. And then, like, like I said, it's not gonna be all this money, it's gonna be digital, like what they're talking about now. That's how the economy is gonna change. It's gonna be a cashless society. But it has to be an honest society of, of cash flow. But anyway, this is how the world's going to look. Say, for instance, you have motion sensors all over the highways and the freeways. And you're, you're in your car, and all of a sudden, your car wiggles on the road. We're not going to send a hologram drone to your car, and it's done. He's going to come, and he's going to scan your retinal. He's going to scan your body. He's going to read your text message to see if you were texting. He's going to scan your body to see if you are on drugs or anything. And this is how they know if you, if you did something illegal. Then they're going to notify the, the, the real cop cars to come and give you a ticket. You're going to have a universal card, a driving license, like a swipe card, but it's everything. It has your information on there. It has your... Um, 
your vitals, everything, you know, it's all tied into the, to the system, banking system. So once he takes your swipe card, universal card, it's like a driving license, goes to his sport car, he has a little computer mounted on there, he'll swipe that, and in, in one little box will fall open, and your receipt will come out. He'll take the card and your receipt and give it to you, and then you can go on. Because in the future, there will be no more judges, no more jewelry, no more executioners. This will be on you if you can't behave yourself. Because in the future, what they're going to do is bring you in when you create a violation or uh, commit a felony, they're going to bring you in on a gurney, put a microchip the size of a pinhead in the delicate part of your brain. It's a low jack, because they're going to take the ankle bracelet from here, this little chip in your brain, they can track you VI satellite. So that means that the satellites can actually see where you are if you go to Moscow or New York or to London. They can actually zoom in on you and videotape you committing a crime. So they don't have to take you to court now. They have actual everything on you videotape. Then they're going to send a drone, drone transporter to pick you up. The drone transporters are going to be bigger in the future. They're little now, but they're going to be major in the future. So they'll send a drone transporter. You won't even hear it. It'll come and it'll be silent. It'll land. It'll open up like a giant claw, suck you in, and sedate you on the way back to Homeland Security. At this point, they'll put you on a gurney and they'll put these virtual laser rings around your body. They make it white or gold. And they will put one around each arm and this will be activated according to your behavior. So if you go and walking around in the malls and people see these rings around you, this is called a virtual penal system. So if you snatch a purse, it activates the ring, the ring cuts your hands off, but it stops you from bleeding. Now wait, wait, wait. <laughs> is this? Oh, this is true. This is real technology, alien technology that's coming. But go ahead, wait, 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 let's not scare everyone. <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely coming. Is this in, to prepare you. Is this in your book? It's in my Matrix 4 book. It's real technology. Homeland Security and the FBI, they got autographed copies of my book because I'm talking about the new technology that's 10 to 15 years ahead, that's coming, that you need to be prepared for. That's why you see movies and you see new technology in the movie, is to shift your consciousness and to help you to adapt to what's coming. But this is very true because you see now they're just on the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg with virtual reality and holograms. But as we go on into the future, this technology is going to become greater. It's going to be a part of your world. You go to Starbucks and you see on television, on a flat screen, that a murder was committed. Well, what happens in the future, it becomes a hologram that surrounds you and you can actually step into the crime scenes and investigate yourself. You can be a participant. No more someone telling you something. You can actually find out facts on your own. It's going to be a part of our world. So this technology that I'm telling you about is more in details in my book, but it's a reality. It's talking about a wireless engine. Yes, you know about the steam engine which was driven by water. You know about the gas engine that we have right now, and the Tesla engine is the electrical car, electricity. But I'm talking that in the future, 15 to 20 years, it's going to be a wireless engine with no water, no gas, no you know, fossil fuel, you know, gasoline. It's definitely gonna be a vibration where the musical note that you're gonna see Morpheus in the Matrix 4 car. It's a Kia commercial that's been running since 2014 to 2013. You can go on YouTube and look at it. Morpheus is doing a blowing a note, which is a vibration, and it starts the engine up. A wireless engine, just like Tesla was talking about, the wireless light bulb. Now, 
Everybody has always laughed at geniuses. This goes way back. They laughed, they laughed at Henry Ford with the car, the Wright brothers with the airplanes, Hustler, he had the wireless light bulb, Apple, Steve Jobs with the iPads and iPhones. But this is what's coming. You don't have to believe me, but this is real technology. But go ahead, what were you going to ask the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot. Uh, no. Um, You've already talked about the technology. Tell us, uh, what's in the book? Tell us about your book. Tell us, I, I know. Well, I want to tell everybody that the Terminator is the prequels to Matrix. Prequels mean it's the beginning story of the Matrix. And Sarah Connor is really Neo's mother. And that's right. J.C. John Connors grows up to be Neo in The Matrix. The Matrix is the future part of the work. It's past, present, and future time travel. That's right. Yeah, I know that's, but it's true. Because if you look at the first three Terminators, and the first Terminator, he comes from the future, from his own planet of technology, because they're going to enslave mankind in the future. But they know there is a baby that's going to be born that's going to destroy the machines. So they have to time travel, and that's where you see him coming through a portal, landing naked without shame, because he's a microchip clone cyborg. He doesn't know he's naked because he's a machine. And he's looking for Sarah Connor, because she's going to have the baby, the one. That's part of the Oracle's prophecy. So that's why he tries to destroy her. And then when you see the second Terminator, you see the teenager. He's a teenager. He doesn't know consciously who he is and why the Terminator is trying to kill him. Then in the third Terminator, he's a man-child, which he's still asleep. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's hidden out in the city, which is the Matrix. And he becomes a hacker. And he takes on an alias, Thomas Anderson. And he doesn't know who he is until the rebels come and wake him up to his purpose. That's why it's called Reloaded and Revolution, the third one. So, because at 30 years of age, that's when the rebellion or the revolution starts. He goes to Morpheus to learn to fight. He goes to the Oracle for the prophecy. And when you see him going through the pods and everything, his human side dies and he is, has ascended into his light body. He's flying, but he's not Superman. He's able to dodge bullets and to touch mirrors in other dimensions. He's able to go into Agent Smith's body and blow him up because he's physical matter and Agent Smith is a program which is antimatter. And so when matter goes into antimatter, it blows it up. So why did the two, the second and third movie, Matrix Revolutions and whatever the, second, the third one was called, why did they kill off all of the characters? They killed off the characters because they did not write the Matrix and the Terminator. They did not write it. That's why you haven't seen another Matrix in 14 years. Now, the fourth installment of the book has been out since 2010 for seven years, selling around the entire globe, around the world. Go right now. You can Google it on Amazon.com, and you can pull it up, and you can put in Sophia Stewart's books, and you'll see the fourth installment. So this is why, because what I had to do in the fourth installment was make two and three a dream, because I wrote The Evolutions of Consciousness, Man versus the Machines. So all I did was just clean two and three up, made it a dream state. That Neo and Trinity were having a dream. They are soulmates, and so they wake up and they start talking about their dream, and the saga of the Matrix continue, but greater than the other three. So how will that expand the consciousness of us? after we've seen the movie and read the book? Well, for all those who love The Matrix and Terminator, Matrix is not dead. 
it continues, you know, but greater, just like I said, greater technology. And the technology that I just spoke about is in the Matrix 4. You actually get to see Neo and Morpheus and Trinity experiencing this new technology that I'm describing in real time. Okay? Any questions? Excuse me? I can't understand you. Yes, go right ahead. Yeah. Well, I'm a visionary, a polymath mathematician, and a visionary, of just like the way these other people like have visualized things, and they've created from their visions. You know, we're seers, and a seer is a visionary. It's just like if you had a dream and you saw something so perfectly, and then you start to create it in reality. When I went to school, USC Film School, I have a degree in journalism, a double major in law and psychology. I was studying to be a doctor and a lawyer, but I'm a poly mathematician. I was doing taxes when I was 11 years old. I was doing what H&R Block is doing for you guys when I was 11 because a lot of wrong people did not understand how to do taxes. And so I scored a, a 98 on the IRS exam because they wanted me to come and work for them. And I also did not do any high school. I took the New York Regents, went into college, a university, and got the degree. So, I'm a poly mathematician, the same as Tesla, same as Leonardo da Vinci. Everybody did the same thing when he drew the parachutes, the tanks, the gatling gun. He had already saw that in the future, he drew it and it became a reality. A lot of people don't understand visionaries or poly mathematicians, but it's just a person well versed in math so when you look at the matrix, the matrix is actually quantum physics, calculus, and sacred ancient geometry. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with some of that math, but some of that math is over certain people's heads. <laughs> well, it's okay. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm here in the back. Unless you want to go for Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Joshua Herp, it's very nice to meet you. I'm very familiar with these ancient metaphysical, you know, hermetic principles. Uh, I used to extract inane dimethyltryptamine, which is the pineal gland, which is the third eye within the brain, that actually is the eye of Horus uh, hieroglyphically. And my good friend, Dr. Katsushi Arasaka, founded the God Particle, the Higgs boson, so he's invented the Large Hadron Collider to, to, uh, to try to, you know, um, you know, discover these ancient hermetic principles of which that I just recently had the opportunity to uh, be, you know, basically nominated and a part of a Nobel Peace Prize that we're currently rewriting neuroscience. So I would really love to speak with you and I have a few questions about the singularity and, and your opinion on a few of those things. Yeah, I'll be very happy to answer because as you can see with the first book, The Third Eye, the, see the book, the Pyramids, it's exactly what you're saying. It comes from ancient Egypt, a Kemet, and it talks about the flower of life. Yes, in the third eye, the eye of God, it's also referencing that because on earth we have two eyes and the worship of the almighty dollar, you know, in the corporations, the banks, which all are the machines that have you enslaved with programs and illusions. So, you were going to ask a question? Yes, I was just going to ask you the, oh, I was going to ask, the new technology that's coming, yes. is, is it part of the machine or is it part of, like, something? Well, it is the technology that can be used for either good or bad. Okay. Because that's how it works. A gun is just a gun until someone uses it, and that person could be using it for either good, to go hunt, to eat, or to, to harm someone. Okay. And that's the way the new technology is. It's, gonna, it's great, phenomenal technology, but it's how we use it. Right. Man uses it. It right. can destroy man or it can help man. So the more that our consciousness wakes up to who we really are or what we are, then the possibility to use this technology for good rises. Exactly, it elevates 
you know, because the more our consciousness is shifted and that we can take this technology and use it for good, because you better realize that in the future, time is money and money is time. And we don't have time or money to waste. So this is why it's very important that many people understand the technology. When you saw the minority report, you didn't laugh. You saw what was coming. And that's what all movies do. And writers, you read their books. A lot of them are before their time. They're, they are geniuses. And they're helping your consciousness to advance. So when this technology comes, you'll be able to accept it, recognize it, and use it. You didn't laugh when you saw the presentations about Bitcoins. Those are digital coins. We're going towards a cashless society, and you need to be prepared for it. Go back into the past. At one time, money was spices. That's right, spices. Then at another time, it was bartering. Be like the natives, horses and furs. Then it went on to gold, and you remember that, don't you? Gold, because it comes in your era of time. Then after that, it went to paper money. Who knows, tomorrow it may be rocks, but you need to get used to transformation and time and what it all means to you in the future. Any more questions? Yes. So I understand the digital currency part. How else do we prepare for this? All I can tell you is to get books, like the way I said, get my book, because it's 35 to 40 years ahead of the curve. It's the Matrix 4 book. You can, anybody with your smartphones, droids, can pull it up right now on Amazon.